I am a representative of the castle, and I'm here to discuss castling. Castling refers to how the castle is contained within cell phones, shoes, people, factories, and surveillance cameras. The castle is in all of us. I don't know when the castle started, but I'm going to discuss an important moment in castling, Elamina Castle. Built in 1482, located off the coast of Ghana, which came to be known as the Gold Coast. Hello everyone, my name is Astris Agunobi. I stay in Rayburn Terrence, um, on the Wilcrest, over here on the southwest side. I've been over here for four months. It is actually um, a pretty good um, area. It's pretty quiet. Um, the kids come out and play on the weekend. Um, it is individually owned. Some of the, you have, basically have different landlords. Some of the rent can be a little high sometimes. Um, also, my grandmother stayed um, on West Belford. I actually was born on Creek Bend in West Belford. I've been over here for the last um, 21 years of my life. I'm 22 now. So yeah, the Southwest is a pretty good area. It's like my second home. I love it. Before 1482, the Portuguese were trading with the people of Elamina. They were trading from small, am small amounts of gold from the sea. Local traders would travel in small boats to the Portuguese ships floating far from the land's edge. The trading between the area of Elamina and Portugal grew. It was so popular, people came across the country just to be a part of the business and the trading grew even larger. The Portuguese traded cloth that they brought from their homeland from, um, from with the mined gold that, that they mined at Elamina. Gold is produced by the collisions of stars. Most of the gold that can be mined on the Earth was produced through asteroids hitting the planet four billion years ago. But the Portuguese could only acquire small amounts of gold with the trading at sea method, as the small boats could only hold so much gold. Building a castle as storage in the middle of the area would increase the amount of gold that could be traded and would provide security from foreign interests. For a site visit, um, this is the area where the castle is going to be built, um, about here. Um, so we're, I'm here to try and persuade um, the community here to pay um, taxes to get this castle to, build, to be built here. Maybe we need to just stick to trading that sea. Like, take control for once. Those castles don't need to be built here. Like. I know what I'm in control is what I'm doing here because I'm very creative. I can do what I want, and if the customer loves it, it's even better. The castle saw some resistance. People who lived in Elamina stormed the castle whilst it was being built. We happened to be building the castle on an ancient burial ground. more trading opportunities and more jobs. Makes sense, but what kind of jobs though? True, like security and being a janitor and some workers, like people need jobs. Yeah, that makes sense, makes yeah. sense. I just woke up this morning and I saw a lot of red bricks outside of my window. Archers, rafters, beams, arches, windows, and they're all in the middle of the houses.
once the castle was built and set up, it was in working order. The castle employed locals for various jobs inside of the castle, such as stock take, for example. Over time, the castle became a form of cultural technique, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Culture derives from the Latin culture, which basically means cultivating so so soil in agriculture. Cultural studies focused more on the ideological aspect of culture, emphasizing feelings and values. For example, the cultural theorist Stuart Hall, whose work pioneered cultural studies as, a, studies as a field, looked at how culture reproduces stereotypes in media. So the notion of something which images and depicts and that which stands in for something else, both of those ideas are kind of brought together in the notion of representation. Now, what this idea that, 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 that media practices, uh, 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 among other things, uh, represent uh, topics, represent uh, types of people, represent events, represent situations, what we're talking about is the fact that in the notion of representation is the idea of giving meaning. So the representation is the way in which meaning is somehow given to the things which are depicted through the... Uh, uh, images or whatever it is on screens or the words on a page which stand for what we're talking about. And if you think that the meaning that it is given, giving is very different from or a kind of distortion of what it really means, then your work on representation would be in measuring that gap between what one might think of as the true meaning of an event or an object and how it is presented in the media. But it's important to note for our discussions here that a stereotype is actually not only based on an abstract idea, but as is an invention in media. The stereotype was a type of letterpress that was used to make reproducing copies a quicker process. We can look at the castle as an invention in media, like a phone or a shoe or a stereotype. One way to do this is to look at the castle through De Jeremy Bentham's design of the Panopticon. He devoted most of his efforts to developing a design for a Panopticon prison, which he described as a new mode of obtaining, quote unquote, power of mind over mind. The design concept consisted of a circular structure with an inspection house at the center. From this vantage point, the staff of the institution could watch the inmates housed around the perimeter without their knowledge of being watched. A real prison based on Bentham's design was never built. However, there are 25 prisons internationally that are Panopticon inspired, including one in Illinois. The castle was a typical medieval design. You can see on the floor plan where the towers at the corners stuck out. This was to protect the castle from a military attack, but also the corners acted a little like a Panopticon, enabling a regime of surveillance over the town it overlooked the locals would have been seen as a potential threat, especially after they had stormed the castle whilst it was being built, and therefore needed to be watched. Imagine what it would have been like to sense those towers watching you. This architectural and cultural regime would have affected both the behavior of the Portuguese, the inhabitants of the castle, and the locals, setting up a binary, a symbolic, and physical dif difference, the physical barrier of a brick wall. The castle automatically criminalized the locals in anticipation that they may revolt. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Adrian. I am working at the castle. I answer phones, um, answering questions and setting appointments for like plumbing and stuff. Um, I like talking on the phone. It's just that I just don't like talking all day. Um, some people call with an attitude. The castle itself was brought over to Ghana from Portugal in parts. One historical account suggested that red bricks, doors, arches, and window frames were prefabricated in Portugal and shipped by sea. The castle design was repeated along the Gold Coast and elsewhere. It became the original from which others were copied. The Canadian media theorist Marshall McCullen can be brought up now. In his book, Understanding Media, 1964, he famously defined the medium as the message itself. For McCullen, the properties of the medium, like for example, a cell phone, impacts the human experience and society, not just because of what information we receive on the phone, but how the phone determines the way in which we receive it. He also argued that the content of a medium is always another medium. So the content of text messages, for example, is in fact the medium of binary code expressed through an alphabetical sim symbol structure on your phone screen. In the case of the castle, one of the messages of the castle was another castle in a sense, but also the idea of the castle as a technology for producing a boundary and a surveillance regime, being watched by the red of the brick wall. You see, it doesn't much matter what you say on the telephone. The telephone as a service is a huge environment, and that is the medium. And the environment affects everybody. What you say on the telephone affects very few. And the same with radio or any other medium. What you print is nothing compared to the effect of the printed word. The printed word sets up a paradigm, a structure of awareness which affects everybody, in very, very drastic ways, and it doesn't very much matter what you print as long as you go on with that form of activity. Hey, Pops, let it help? Say what? The castle was a storage device, much like a cell phone. There are early documents that show workers who logged a stock take inside the castle. The increase in quantities that the storage allowed contributed to the expansion of trading and produced more wealth for the Europeans. The castle at this time was engaged in slavery, but as gold increased, so did slavery and the expansion of the transatlantic slave trade. The aspect of storing goods expanded to the imprisoning of slaves and they were treated as goods to be stored. In 1637, the castle was taken over by the Dutch. The slave trade started to expand at this point. The enslaved were imprisoned in, sh in rooms in the castle, much like the way goods were stored previously. For the German media theorist Frederick Kittler, all media are systems of storage, processing and transmission of information. The castle could store not only goods and people, but also the technology and culture of castling itself that was essential to the development of slavery as a historical event and is globally reproduced. I got my badge. Time to start working now. A 
Another significant aspect of how the castle came about and contributes to castling is perspective. Perspective is a technology that the German media theorist Bernard Siegel argues was already contained in early maps. During the Renaissance period, the techniques of perspective was developed as a way to try and represent reality accurately. However, perspective is not reality itself, it is a technique of representation, an illusion, a cultural technique that artificially positions the human eye at the center of its surroundings and therefore creates an ambiguous culture of objectivity and scientific truth. Seagard argues that early maps were based on methods of projection, where the human eye was important. Projecting the human forward along the longitude and latitude of lines to discover lands until then untouched by Europeans. Furthermore, the technique of perspective also utilized the technology of the grid. These techniques put the subject in the center of the globe that could be divided up and conquered. There is a connection between the map that helped the Portuguese discover and exploit the Gold Coast, the development of the Western self-determined self individual subject, and the individual human-centered perspective that it can be argued started in the map. And, and the ships that brought the Portuguese and the first castle that they built. It could be argued that what contributed to the development of slave trade was articulated in relation to the mediums of perspective and cartography, where the development of the conquering subject was brought out, putting them, us, at the center of the globe everything that was in the way of the conquering line of perspective could be taken over simply by moving forward. Such a system othered the indigenous populations in their own lands and turned them into subjects to be gazed upon, divided them up under the prism of a commercial grid and made them into commodities to be exchanged for gold. Well, since the castle here anyways, we might as well take the opportunity of the jobs they have available for us, like inventory, being a loader, you can even be a manager of the warehouse, even a security guard for the um, ones that's in the tower watching us. A little extra money to put in your pocket. Who don't need that? The castle structured the relationship between the village and the global trade industry the colonized and the colonizers. It did so through specific cultural techniques, some of which I have just described, from the surveillance of the other through architectural and visual elements to the castle as a storage device of both goods and people, and as a storage and transmission device of the very cultural techniques necessary for expanding capitalism itself creating subjects to transmit the castle. Elamina Castle still stands today and is a memory of that past. While the system of slavery no longer formally exists, the self-determined individual is still a powerful part of culture today, perhaps even more than before. Elamina Castle has become a tourist destination. People visit the castle in a process of shaping themselves in a complex relationship of presence, 
individualism and self-surveillance. Thank you. 